Battery powered robotic pool vacuums are a great way to keep your pool dirt, sand, and leaf free without paying for a pool service. But the question is, will a $250 vacuum work just as well as one that costs twice as much? In the first test, we'll see which vacuum has the most consistent coverage of the entire pool. Then we'll test how the vacuums handle different sizes and types of debris. Finally, we'll test each robot's ease of use and required maintenance. The least expensive robotic pool cleaner that we'll be testing today is the YBOT WY1103, which has an MSRP of $369 and an actual street price around $250. The Ybot has free spinning wheels and uses jets of water out of the front and back of the unit to steer itself around your pool. The Ybot is designed to only clean the floor of your pool and not the steps, walls, or the water line. And it has a 5200 milliamp hour battery, which Ybot claims will give it 120 minutes of runtime. And we're gonna test that. When it comes to pool cleaning robots, the most important thing is that they're able to get full coverage of the area that they're supposed to be cleaning. I set up a camera above my pool and ran each vacuum a minimum of two full cycles to determine their navigation and coverage abilities. The Ybot navigates by using adjustable angle water jets on the front and back of the robot. Using the recommended 0 and 20 degree settings, the Ybot will make a slight turn after each change in direction. The Ybot detects when it's moving by using a paddle switch that tilts back as long as the robot is moving forward. But in my pool, the Ybot often got stuck in the deep end because it wasn't able to move fast enough up the pool's incline to keep that paddle switch tilted. In the two testing trials, the Ybot met its advertised two hours of runtime, but only covered roughly 70% of the pool, and as expected, was not able to navigate walls, ledges, or stairs. Next, with an MSRP of $550, but a street price around $350, is the Seato Seal SE. The Seato navigates using tank treads, it has dual scrubbing brushes to break up algae growth, and an ultrasonic distance sensor that allows it to make a rudimentary map of your pool. Unlike the Ybot, the Seato can clean both the pool floor and the walls of your pool, and it has three selectable modes that can be toggled between using the single button on the top of the robot or using the Seato phone app. The Seato has a 7800 milliamp hour battery pack, which it claims will give it between two and two and a half hours of runtime. In my testing, the Seato CLSE achieved its maximum of two and a half hours of runtime in full coverage mode, where it covered around 90% of the pool floor, including the ledge and stairs, and 90% of the pool walls, all the way up to the waterline. In wall only mode, the runtime did drop to two hours, but the coverage was even better, covering 100% of the walls and waterline, and incidentally covering around 90% of the pool floor in the process, only missing a small area at the top of the stairs. In floor only mode, the Seato ran for over three hours and had 100% coverage of the traditional pool floor floor, but as expected, didn't cover the stairs or ledge in that mode. After that, with an MSRP of $649, but a street price around $500, is the Ofuzzy Terrain 10. The Ofuzzy also uses tank treads, but uses accelerometer-based navigation to be able to clean both the floor and walls of your pool, which basically just means that it knows when it starts and stops moving, and it knows whether it's sitting flat or it's tilted. The Ofuzzy has a single large scrubber on the front of the robot to dislodge algae and dirt and has a 8600 milliamp hour battery, which it says will give it 110 minutes of runtime. In my testing, the Ofuzzy also perfectly matched its advertised runtime of one hour and 50 minutes, and it was able to clean both the floor and walls of my pool. However, with no real strategy for navigating the walls, the cleaning was patchy and inconsistent. And although the Ofuzzy did end up on the ledge and steps during the wall cleaning portion of its cleaning schedule, it didn't make any specific efforts to clean the floor of those spaces, meaning the Ofuzzy covered roughly 90% of the pool floor, but only approximately 30% of the pool walls. The Ofuzzy also came with additional flotation foam that it said could help with wall climbing, and it absolutely did. But unfortunately, it caused the robot to continually climb up the top step, which was shallow enough to trigger its sensors, which then prevented it from continuing its cleaning session. Next, for an MSRP of $699, but a street price around $550, is the Aerobo PC100. The Aerobo also uses tank treads and accelerometer-based navigation to be able to clean both the pool floor and the walls of your pool. But unlike the Ofuzzy, the Aerobo also allows you to select between floor-only mode and full coverage mode. The Aerobo has a single scrubber brush on the front of the robot and a 7800 milliamp hour battery that it says will allow it to clean for up to two hours. In my testing, the Aerobo significantly exceeded its two hour advertised battery life with a runtime around two hours and 50 minutes in full coverage mode, where it was able to cover roughly 95% of the pool floor traversing both the steps and ledge of the pool, as well as scrubbing approximately 50% of the pool's waterline. In floor-only mode, the Aerobo ran for two hours and 32 minutes and had perfect coverage of the traditional pool floor, but as expected, didn't cover the stairs or ledge. And last, for an MSRP of $799 and a street price around $650, is the Aper Seagull Pro. Unlike the other wall cleaning robots, the Aper uses wheels instead of treads and trades the single suction motor for a dual suction motor design. The Aper also uses accelerometer-based navigation, but has three selectable modes 
floor only, wall only, and full coverage. Like the last two robots, the Aper uses a single large scrubbing brush design for dirt and algae removal, and the Aper Seagull Pro has the largest battery yet at 9,000 milliamp hours, which they claim should enable three hours of runtime. In floor only mode, the Aper was able to achieve its three hours of advertised runtime, but it didn't get full coverage of the pool floor, completely missing the area in front of the steps. In full coverage mode, the Aper did a better job on the pool floor, but only ran for one hour and 51 minutes, and it struggled to climb the walls, and it also didn't navigate onto the stairs or ledge of the pool. In wall-only mode, the Aper ran for two hours and 30 minutes, but it still didn't navigate onto the ledge or stairs, and it had a really hard time climbing all the way up to the waterline. That means that the best coverage by far was from the Seattle Seal SE in both wall and full coverage modes. The Aerobo also did well and was able to navigate the stairs and pool ledge in addition to cleaning the waterline. The Ofuzzy had decent coverage of the floor, but wall cleaning and waterline cleaning was patchy at best, and the Aper Seagull Pro had surprisingly poor performance and was not able to adequately suction itself to the walls to clean the waterline. The Ybot coverage was expectedly the worst since it essentially relies on randomly bumping into the walls to change direction. And in addition to not covering any of the stairs, walls, or ledges, it also didn't achieve full coverage of the traditional pool floor in either trial. Next, even though coverage is very important, just because the robot passes over an area, it doesn't mean that it will do an adequate job cleaning that area. And depending on your geographic location, nearby vegetation, and whether you have a pool enclosure, the type of debris that your vacuum is going to need to pick up could be very different. In the first test, I used waterlogged leaves from an oak tree and a crepe myrtle to see how the vacuums would handle larger debris. In this test, the Air Robo performed the best and actively pulled leaves through the back side of the robot using suction. The Ofuzzy also did a good job pulling in leaves from the surrounding area through the back of the robot, but it did have a concerning amount of leaves being pushed out by the scrubbing brushes after passing under the robot. Both the Aper and Seattle struggled to get the leaves past their scrubbing brushes, and since they have rubber guides under the robot to direct debris to their bins, they weren't able to pull in surrounding leaves through the sides. The Ybot performed the worst in this test due to the fact that its propulsion system stirred up the surrounding leaves before the robot could pass over them. In the second test, I mixed small to medium aquarium substrate with black aquarium sand to test how the robots would handle finer, heavier debris. And in this test, those rubber suction guides on the Aper and Seattle drastically increased their ability to pick up fine debris. And both robots left a clean path every time they passed over the debris pile. Although I would say that the Aper slightly outperformed the Seattle just due to the fact that it has a wider cleaning path, which allowed it to pick up more debris on each pass. The Aerobo and Ofuzzy both left a significant amount of debris after each pass, but the Aerobo did a better job overall and it seemed like the Ofuzzy lacked the suction power to be able to adequately pick up the larger debris. Just like in the last test, the Ybot's biggest issue was that the turbulence caused by its water jet propulsion system stirred up the debris into the surrounding water, which made it look like it was picking up a decent amount, but in actuality, most of it would just resettle on the bottom after a few minutes. I also tested how each robot would deal with toys and goggles left in the pool, and I found that unlike their indoor counterparts, these pool vacuums don't seem to have any issue with jamming or tangles, and for the most part, they just completely avoided the larger objects, and whenever they did pick them up, they would just spit them back out a few minutes later. So as far as debris pickup, you need to think about what type of debris your robot will typically be cleaning up in your pool. I personally have a screen enclosure, so I basically never had leaves in my pool but I deal with sand and silt every day, so the Seattle and Aper are the clear choice for me. If I didn't have a screen, I would lean more towards the Aerobo without the debris directing channels, because ultimately it did a much better job with neutrally buoyant large debris like leaves. And for the last set of tests, these are things that you might not have even considered when thinking about pool vacuums. You might not know this, but you aren't supposed to leave any vacuum in your pool indefinitely, because pool chemicals and UV from the sun will significantly reduce the lifespan of your expensive vacuum if you just leave it in there to marinate 24-7, 365. I've previously had suction side vacuums like the Zodiac MX-6 and MX-8 which ran on a schedule every day and I really only took them out of the pool for special occasions. And even though the vacuums themselves held up relatively well in the harsh chemicals, the suction tubing only ever lasted a couple of seasons before it was completely rotted and falling apart. And a single section of this replacement hose is around $25. Even if you were to buy a corded pool cleaner like the Dolphin Nautilus, you're still not supposed to leave it in your pool all the time. So how easy it is to take your pool cleaner in and out of the pool should be a top consideration especially because these cleaners are not particularly lightweight. So to get a better idea of this, I set up a digital scale to measure the initial weight of the robotic pool cleaner when it's first pulled out and filled with water. Then I recorded how long it took to drain, and last I recorded its empty weight. The heaviest robot was the Aper Seagull Pro that had a maximum weight of 40.24 pounds when it was pulled out of the water, and it drained 18.7 pounds of water out in 5 seconds for a final weight of 21.57 pounds. 
After that, the Ofuzzy Terrain 10 had a maximum weight of 38.2 pounds and drained 20 pounds of water in 12 seconds for a final weight of 18.24 pounds. Then the Ybot WY1103 had an initial weight of 37.36 pounds and it drained 22.5 pounds of water in 22 seconds for the lightest final weight of 14.8 pounds. Next, the Seattle CLSE had an initial weight of 37.18 pounds, draining 16 pounds of water in 6 seconds for a final weight of 21.18 pounds. And the lightest robot to pull out of the water was the Aerobo PC100, which had an initial weight of 36.58 pounds and drained 16.86 pounds of water in 10.5 seconds for a final weight of 19.72 pounds. I also read some reviews that said these pool cleaning robots leaked debris back into the pool whenever they were being pulled out. So I set up a test where I put 100 grams of black sand into each robot's bin and I submerged them for 30 minutes. And then I pulled them out of the water onto a white towel. In this test, the only robot that had any black sand leak out was the Ybot WY1103, and even then, it was a fairly minuscule amount compared to what was in the debris bin. However, after some experimentation, I was able to replicate the leaking bin situation on each robot, which is usually caused by incomplete cleaning of the bin trapdoor hinge or the seal around the bin's intake. And that leads me to my last observation about these robots, which is the ease of emptying and cleaning the bins properly so that they continue to work. Without a doubt, the easiest bin to empty and maintain was the Ofuzzy Terrain 10, which had an open basket design and a seal built into the robot. However, even though it is extremely convenient and easy to use, I worry about the longevity of the foam seal and I wonder how the functionality of the robot will be reduced when the seal eventually breaks down. I also have similar concerns about the debris basket in the Seato, which uses a rubber trap door instead of a hard plastic one with a spring. Because while a spring could lose some tension, I think it's far more likely for this soft rubber to become brittle and lose its ability to properly seal. That said, the rest of the Seattle's bin is very well designed, easy to use, and easy to clean. Although I did notice that it tends to collect some fine debris on the top of the bin as well as inside, which isn't necessarily a problem, just an observation. The best bin design by far was the Aper Seagull Pro, which I have to say is also consistent with the rest of the Aper's build quality, which feels solidly built in every aspect, including the massive charging brick. The Aper's bin was easy to remove, easy to clean, and easy to reinstall every single time. When it comes to the Air Robo, the bin is by far the worst part of its design. Not only is the bin inverted so that all the debris is around the seal, but it's also made of a flimsy plastic that makes it difficult to latch the two sides together properly. But that still wasn't that bad compared to the Ybot that collects all the debris in the bottom shell of the robot, which is full of nooks and crannies that need to be rinsed. Add to that the fact that you have to take the whole robot apart and that the clips that hold the two robot halves together have no guides, the cleaning of the Ybot becomes a much more frustrating task than it needs to be. All right, so conclusion time. Which robotic pool vacuum is the best? If you're mainly dealing with smaller debris like sand, silt, and calcium deposits, then the Seattle Seal SE was by far the best performing robot when it comes to coverage, ease of use, and pickup performance. Combined with the fact that it was also the second least expensive robot that I tested, and it's a no-brainer. Though I do wonder if its price will stay low if its popularity increases, because it feels like a much higher tech product than the rest of the robots that I tested with its ultrasonic mapping system and phone app. If the debris that you're mostly dealing with is leaves, then the Aerobo PC100 had excellent coverage of the pool floor, walls, and waterline, and did a much better job with large, lightweight debris due to its lack of a suction channel. Though, if I'm being completely honest, I think I would still suggest the Seato over the Aerobo, as long as that $200 price gap still exists. As always, there are no sponsored reviews on this channel, but I do have links down in the description for each of the robots in this video, and as always, I appreciate if you use those links, since as an Amazon affiliate, I do earn a small commission on the sale at no cost to you. I'd also like to thank all of my awesome patrons over at Patreon for their continued support of my channel. And if you're interested in supporting my channel, please check out the links down in the description. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to hit that thumbs up button and consider subscribing. And as always, thanks for watching The Hookup.